Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Discussions on gear, technique, industry news, and interviews with the best in the business. Now, here are your hosts, Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Welcome, everyone, to Shooting Spaces. This is Rich Baum from Sacramento, California. And Brian Berkowitz from New York. And we want to welcome you to our podcast. How you doing, Brian? Good. 2019. Woohoo! It's going well. How's it going for you? It's good. Things picked up a little bit. Getting some shoots done. Um, Things picked up, um, you know, early at the end of December, surprisingly enough, during holiday week. And uh, things have been kicking in full gear for the first couple of weeks of 2019. So things are going full force and uh, it's cold, cold as hell out here in New York, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, chugging away. Yeah, awesome. And how was, uh, how was it down south? I'm decompressing from Mexico. It went really well. The only problem was uh, I took a few jobs while I was down there shooting uh, Airbnbs in a hotel. And it felt like I shot my whole, I worked my whole vacation, but I, uh, and my, my wife was happy because I paid for the vacation, but, uh, everybody out there in podcast land, be careful what you wish for, because you know, I come home and I'm like, I need a vacation really bad. So, but it was oh, yeah. really nice. It was just a beautiful place called La Ventana, about, uh, an hour North of Cabo and, uh, we're getting a new house. So we're, uh, all excited about down there. So. Yep, that's right. And I heard you're getting uh, all the preparations in uh, in place for the maybe the summer 2019 spring retreat for uh, mm-hmm. for uh, shooting spaces. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have the uh, the annual meeting we'll have down there, the board meeting, meeting of the <laughs> meeting of the minds, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on today, Brian? Why don't you tell us uh, what do we got going on? Oh, so we have a great guest today. Our guest has um, gained a lot of attention in the last couple of weeks or months. Um, off his work that he's been posting. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Gary Castle to the show. Gary, thanks for coming on with us. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me, guys. Sure. And I know um, lately you've been posting a lot of work and getting a lot of attention for your running gun style, which I guess is kind of like your ambient, all natural. I don't want to call it HDR because it's not, but it's um, using high dynamic range imagery to produce your final results. Um, but not like the over-process HDR we're all used to. But um, your work is really good, and you have um, two types of shooting you do, I think. You have your run and gun, and then your more higher-end stuff. So before we get into all that, um, just give us a little bit of background on yourself, where you're from, maybe your website URL, where people can look at some of your work while they're listening and all that. Sure. So um, my website name is Sandcastle Imaging. Um, or you can just go to sandcastle.com and castle is spelled like my last name, K-A-S-L. Um, and I'm from San Diego, California, born and raised down here. Um, pretty much went to, uh, I mean, I started getting into photography in my late twenties. Um, and I went to uh, community college and took their photo program, uh, down at San Diego city college. Um, and I was doing classes pretty much full time. I just did their whole program. Um, and what's kind of cool about that that college is they don't really focus on um, what I would think your typical photography program is. Um, they more train like practical photographers. So they try to have an emphasis on like becoming a working photographer. So I got a lot of you know cool experience in the studio. Um, they had a lot of product photography classes and portrait classes and stuff like that. So, um, I took all of them, um, got a lot of studio time. Um, and then I ended up with a, a portrait job doing family portraits, um, for a company down here in San Diego and downtown. Um, and I kind of, I was doing that for a couple years or a few years. Um, and then kind of stumbled upon, uh, the Mike Kelly, the first Mike Kelly tutorial. And he, um, I mean, I wouldn't say it was fully real estate geared towards real estate photography, but he kind of touched on it. Um, and he kind of sparked my interest and I started looking into it because we have a huge real estate market down here. Um, so it made sense business wise. And I just kind of jumped into it. Um, I think rich was, rich was around when I was first started posting photos a long time ago. Um, and, uh, 
I remember he gave me some tips back in the day. I remember my first Twilights and stuff like that. And I was all pumped that he was commenting on my photos. So um, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, it was I, funny. I, I get a life, Gary. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm like, you know, it's funny. Everybody's just um, helping everybody and everybody's, everybody's passing me up, man. I got to get going. <laughs> so I think everybody's got their own market, you know. Uh-oh. Yeah, you're you're rocking it though. I want to I want to tell everybody that's out there, um, and I I don't do this every podcast, but the last couple of ones I feel like it. I want everybody to go ch- if you're on a computer or when you get home, check out Gary's work because it's absolutely stunning. It's just great stuff, Gary. And I want to want to ask you, uh, look, it probably that's stuff on your website is probably not your running gun stuff. No, yeah, actually, I don't I don't do a whole lot of posting of that stuff. That's kind of like. Mm-hmm. Uh, meant for more you know modest properties where they don't you know the realtor doesn't want to spend a lot of money yeah um but there's there's a big market for that down here too um you know there's me and sam kind of both dip in the luxury side of things down here um sam chen but uh you know and there's a there's a couple other guys that just look like they handle some some luxury stuff but um i would say 85% 85% of the entire market is this, you know, bing bang kind of stuff that they want cheap, mm-hmm. fast, and they just want it consistent, you know. So um, the running gun thing is all geared towards satisfying that um, more of a volume based um, situation, I guess. Sure, mm-hmm. but I feel like every type of market has that. I don't know if it's 85% everywhere, but has that higher percentage, you know, even here on Long Island where. You know, I have certain parts of Long Island which are super high and everything's three, four, five million and up. You know, you still have, you go out to the, you know, the middle of the island and, you know, you have your four or five, six hundred thousand dollar houses where the agents don't want to spend that. So right. um, having a run and gun situation like you is great where you can get in a house and I think, what is it, like an hour you said, and just be done and the work looks phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, I mean, um, after you get it down, you practice with it and stuff. Uh, I'm usually in and out of a house and we're doing that in about 30 minutes. Um, and then it takes me about 30 minutes to edit that whole session. So, uh, it goes, it goes pretty quick. So I try to make it to where, you know, that's why I call it like a $200 an hour workflow almost because I can make, I charge 200 bucks for that. And then, uh, it takes me an hour of work. So, um, that's kind of how I geared that together or got that together yeah i guess the the concept there is you just have to have your technique so down pat that you know you can go in and out and be out of a house in a half hour and do you limit that to specific house size or price or even if there's a five million dollar house for sale and that's what they want that's what you give them i would do it yeah um it's i mean with the you know ever since these ad 200s came out um I mean, it makes, it makes shooting a lot faster for me, um, because I use the bounce technique and all that. And I mean, these things got a lot of power compared to when I first started, I was doing the, um, the, the regular flashes and they're just terrible. Were you using young nuos back then? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. It's funny how we've all, uh, we've all progressed. You know, right. And the, mm-hmm. the, the more power, I feel like Tim Allen, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's what you say when you've got a 600. Okay. Um, I, I want to say, and, and I've one of those, uh, I started with the two, I, I went to the 200 after the 360 and I wasn't sure about it. And I, I kind of just didn't really, I wasn't crazy about them. And then I really loved my 360s. But then it, in weddings, I started really, really loving the uh, 200s for weddings and portrait shoots. But now for uh, real estate and, uh, and design, I'm finding the 200s just, they, they fit the right size, the right size in the package and the form factor. A couple of downsides, but uh, I, I really like them. I think they're a value for the money and uh, really make our day easier, make our job easier. Yeah, a lot easier. Yeah. And uh, what cameras are you shooting with, Gary? Um, I use a 6D right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I believe more in the lenses than the, the camera thing. Um, and I honestly, if you have good glass, I feel like you could give me any body and I'm going to make some good pictures with it. Um, and what uh, lenses are you, uh, what's your favorite lens? You probably tilt shift in it or what are you doing? 
Um, I mean, I love to break out the tilt shifts when the job calls for it and, mm-hmm. you know, the budget's there and stuff, because I find that the tilt shift, unless I am just like kind of setting it and trying to run through some, some places on, you know, if I have the 17 on or something, um, I usually just, uh, go with the 16 to 35. Cause I, I like to get the compression from zooming in a little bit, mm-hmm. um, when I can, <clears throat> but then having the 16 is nice for when you got to go wide. But, um, you know, most of the time I would say I'm on the 16 to 35, uh, mm-hmm. and then only tilt shift when, you know, when I get to sit there and take my time and really dial in the comps. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with the 16 to 35. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, what are you doing on your uh, for your support, your uh, tripod and, and head? A little gear talk here. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, yeah, I love gear. Um, I, I use a man photo. Uh, we got to get a t shirt, Brian. I love gear. Yeah, dude, we're like gear. Oh, we have the we have the uh, geared head t shirt on our website we now. I got gear. Love gear. Yeah, no, it's like uh, that's one of my favorite things to to nerd out on is mm-hmm. gear. Yeah. My wife hates it, but uh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but I use a carbon fiber uh, Manfrotto tripod with um, with uh, the junior head, the 410, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Um, right now, I want to get the uh, the one you guys were telling me to get the, um, <laughs> the D4, D4 or whatever, but I just haven't got it. I, I, you know what I ended up getting was... Uh, I think you guys have an ad on it on the website there, but it's that little heckler photo top. Oh, the heckler photo. Yeah. 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 That thing is beast. I love it. Yeah. When um, I used to have my 410, I used to have that also. And it was great just to put an L bracket right on there. It was. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I I had a workshop and there was a couple of people that were like, what's on your camera? And I'm all, it's an L bracket. And they're like, what's that? And I'm all, oh my God, guys. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the easiest way to go to go vertical, and not, you know. Um, well, I had somebody uh, asking me the other day, um, "How do you? What, what did he say? How do you work a? How does a t- tilt? How does an L bracket work?" I'm like, "It it doesn't. It's just is. <laughs> yeah, just it is really connected. important. It's basically if if you're familiar, not familiar out there, what an L bracket is is it's like basically a, a plate for your camera that is in an L shape and it allows you to, instead of having to flop your, your head over and recompose and do whatever, you just open up your clamp, you turn your camera vertical and there's a plate on the side of your camera. So you just, it saves you so much time and energy and, and hassle. So, and if you don't have an L bracket out there, uh, learn about it and uh, just go get yourself an L bracket. You'll thank us later. So it's really yeah, Arca real Swiss, anything Arca Swiss. Yeah. And Arca Swiss is simply the, the form factor for the plate is a certain mm-hmm. dimension, like certain uh, brackets, uh, they make, they make plates for, um, for Manfrotto makes their own plates, but the most universal um, size in, in dimensions is Arca Swiss compatible. So mm-hmm. really easy to find out uh, also on the web if you do a search. Yeah. Awesome. So what you got going on um, this year, Gary, are you doing any more um, workshops or you did some little tutorials? What do you have uh, going on that uh, you want to you want to tell about and tell anybody about? Yeah. um, So this year I'm going to be trying to set up. uh, I want to set up a couple workshops. Um, I've had some more people asking um, and I really enjoy it. So um, I don't know if I'm going to try to do them live or if i want to try to do online ones or maybe both um so i'm gonna try to set something like that up i also want to start working on my youtube channel more um but it's just finding the time you know um (laughs) youtube channel huh (laughs) yeah i'm sure you know yeah but you know it's it's uh it takes you know you find out you're, you know, you're in the shower thinking, oh, yeah, a YouTube channel sounds like a great idea. I could probably help a lot of people. And but then, you know, you start working and everything piles up and it, you take you got to dedicate a, a lot of time to it. So um, and then throw in know, a throw on a podcast and uh, and, and workshops and. Yeah, you got a full day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, time goes away so fast, you know, yeah. um, no, that's but then exciting. Also, I mean, yeah, yeah, I want I want to try to do that. and. Uh, you know, I had some interest um, of going uh, to the Midwest to do a workshop. So 
um, I wouldn't mind heading, trying to set up something to go out there. I would love to go out there and, uh, I got some connections out there, so I think I could find, um, uh, you know, places to shoot. Um, and actually I think the first one I'm going to set up though is going to be down here in San Diego again. And, um, I think it's going to be a really nice, big luxury house in, uh, in La Jolla. So right on the beach, um, it'd be really cool. I, but I got the buddy to set that up too. So, um, yeah, it should be exciting. Well, I'll tell you something. Um, one thing I've learned from all my workshops was finding the right location is, is about the most challenging part of the whole workshop. It's amazing. But when you can yeah. get a, a place that works uh, for the, the visual, the physical, everything, logistics, everything with it, it's magic. And the, the house I use up here in Auburn, California is just absolutely perfect. So, uh, yeah, good luck on on finding a nice house. And uh, Thank I you. certainly keep us, keep us informed on that. So... Uh, uh, I, sure I, I know that we wanted to talk to you about certain accolades you uh, you have had la last year, and uh, why don't you tell us what you were you were up for, for or what did, what happened with the PFRE? Oh, I ended up getting the uh, the November contest. It was the open one um, with the staircase shot. Um, didn't land photographer of the uh, photographer of the year, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, Mike is super, super good. I mean, I went through and I looked at all the competitions websites and I knew I didn't stand a chance after doing that. So, um, but hopefully this year, you know, that's another thing I want to try to work on. Um, I'm doing some coaching, um, with somebody too, and, uh, with Tony Colangelo and, uh, he's helping me try to work on my branding and stuff too, and kind of get all that dialed in, which, um, you know, I never, I think educating yourself is, should be a constant thing. So I'm always out there trying to keep the education going. I don't want to ever stop. You know, I feel like if you stop, then you're kind of going to just kind of, I don't know, float away a little bit, mm -hmm. but you know, staying up on trends and uh, always trying to better, you know, the business side of everything along with your photography side and then ramping up gear. And there's always something to work on, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Well, well, I do want to say, I, you know, if anyone hasn't seen that image yet, the staircase image specifically, which was the November winner, definitely check it out because it was a phenomenal image. I know you have it on your website as well as the PFR, yeah. obviously, site you can find it on. But um, even on your website, I'm looking now, it's under your residential work. I'm it's looking right at it right now. now as we speak, too. Pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah, I will say, I will really say. Cool I will say that, you know, I, I try and explain to especially newer photographers that, you know, they see work out there and it's just like this work you'll never be able to touch. And, and so much of it is the subject. It's like a, a wedding with a beautiful bride. You know, it's 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 mm -hmm. just a wonderful thing. Uh, bride and the groom that are in love, that are, are beauty, you know, really great looking couple that really helps to make it. And it's like a house, too. So the shot you got of the staircase is, you know, obviously in an, an exquisite exquisite house uh so you're mm -hmm. you're halfway there then but to be able to get that shot is pretty freaking cool and i wanted to ask you what did you do for this just kind of point your uh lean your tripod over the railing or what did you do to get this this angle so i think for this one i um i have the the manfrotto tripod where the oh um, yeah yeah the boom yeah, arm. the column yeah, po yeah uh -huh. the, the column pops out awesome so and and it'll go 90 degrees so i think i set it up like that with a little bit of an angle and then um i had the 17 millimeter tilt shift on for that mm -hmm. um kind of and then i had my my cam ranger so i didn't want to be hanging over the rail <laughs> it was it was a long drop I'm a big guy, so <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to chance that. But so I was kind of looking on the back, and I just got it as uh, you know, dialing the composition. I would say was the hardest part of that shot. Um, and then, believe it or not, the lighting on that was very minimal. Um, yeah. The only thing I did was I took an ambient shot, and then I took uh, one flash pop. I had a, I had an assistant that day, um, and I had him down at the very bottom, and he bounced a light um back onto the on the floor you know just to brighten it up down there because it was kind of dark i mean that's it that's the only light that i put in there um and the rest was just ambient you nailed um, so the you nailed the symmetry i mean 
really nice. And that's so hard to do. For one, it's hard to do because you've got your camera all the way out there. But the other one, too, is, um, you know, I find shots like this are hard to do with a prime lens because, you know, you really don't have the ability to move your camera um, to get the framing you want. So, you know, you did great. And it's just a, just a wonderful looking shot. Thank you. So let me ask you, Gary, um, you know, about your technique a little, because we haven't really discussed that. And, um, you know, we'll discuss your running gun quickly in a little bit. Um, but your regular typical, I guess, higher end shoot, I mean, are you just lighting the hell out of it like like most of us do and like you normally would? Is that your typical workflow? Are you um, light painting? Are you just bouncing? How do you I, I, I bounce most of the time. Uh, sometimes if I, if I, uh, my higher end shoots, like if I'm doing the big luxury ones, um, I really like to use, um, the direct shots, like, or the direct flash with an umbrella or something. And I can, you know, like I'll put a 600 on a stand outside with an umbrella and I'll blast light through the windows. Um, I love doing that type of stuff. We're kind of more creating light. Um, and it really, it, it, you know, Back in the day when I first started this, uh, I, I remember people were like, it's really like a shot by shot basis. I think like Wayne Capilli talks about that um, and how like he approaches every shot differently. And I was like, I don't have time to approach every shot differently. I just want to do one thing that works. And what worked in the beginning was flashing the hell out of everything, every corner and just covering my bases, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I think once you kind of, I don't know. Once I, I've been doing it for a few years now, and um, I I kind of use the light only when I need it. Um, I still use it on every shot because I have a certain look that I go for, and I feel like if I if I you know go off of that at all, it does kind of upset the whole set as a whole a little bit. Um, so I try to use flash on everything, but uh, just how much of it depends on on what I'm shooting at the time. Um, you know, bedrooms. I feel like they're so small. I can just basically light, you know, light it the run and gun way every time. And I can brush in what I want from, you know, from the ambient frames. Um, but the higher end stuff, I like to, I mean, I like to bring as much, uh, of the craft into it as I can really. Um, which, you know, I think when you start using a lot of supplemental lighting and, you know, I get to kind of, like I said, I went to school, so I, I, I got to mess with all kinds of different lighting. And uh, I think, you know, just, I don't know. I personally, ambient stuff, all ambient stuff is, you know, is great when you can pull it off, but it takes a lot of work to me. I think the flash saves me a lot of time in the editing. So I don't, uh, the look, I like them both. So I'm like, well, whatever, flash helps me go faster. So I'm going to just do flash. And then I get to bring in some, you know, some cool shadows and some cool lighting. Um, but, at the same time, the real estate, you're not, <clears throat> I guess you're not supposed to be too, uh, too extra with the lights and stuff to, you know, you want it to look natural, but so there's a, there's a balance between it all, but, uh, but yeah. And are you, um, cause personally I'm, I'm got a lot of personal goals this year and, um, you know, what is your personal goal as far as, um, are you changing uh focusing more on on design work and more on on anything in particular whether it's a technique or whether it's a type of photography what do you what are you kind of thinking about yeah so like with my coaching um i want to get into doing more uh like work with architects um and i really i love doing our residential work um, I saw Brian, I saw you post some pictures, uh, some commercial stuff recently that looks super killer. Um, oh, thanks. um, but I never really got to shoot uh, any stores or anything yet. I think it would be fun. Um, I've shot a few restaurants and I, I like that too, but, um, trying to work with their hours and work with the employees because they never want to shut down to let you do the photos unless it's like 2 AM or something, you know, but um, I've had it to where, you know, it's like a daytime cafe and they didn't want you to shoot at night. So, you know, working with all that stuff is kind of tough. And then they also kind of throw in, uh, you know, food photography and portraits in the mix when I really, really love doing just interior work. So, um, I don't know. I, I really want to focus on high end interior, uh, residential stuff. 
Um, you know, it's funny. I hear you with the other stuff because I actually got a call this week for from a law firm. Um, they have two locations, one in Manhattan and one out on Long Island. They want me to shoot their new offices. And they asked me, you know, hey, can you also shoot headshots of all our attorneys? And that's not something I really excel in. I don't like doing it. I don't enjoy doing it, but mm -hmm. I have to be able to do it to get the job. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't call myself a portrait or headshot photographer by any means, um, nor am I very good at it. But I think I can wing it enough to not deliver results that look horrendous. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm going to go out and shoot as best as I could headshots. And I know, you know, my interior photos are going to look much better than the headshots, but you know, I'll get the job. So yeah, yeah I hear you. I find it really interesting when, um, because I come from shooting everything. When I started going back to photography, I had to make a living and I, I got pretty good at, at weddings and portraits and headshots and sports, you name it. And I just kind of take it for granted. And when I hear people that literally are uh, real estate photographers and they, that's all they shoot. They don't even like to shoot a camera when they're, they're on their own time. And it's just really unique to me. But I think that, um, yeah, headshots are something that all all real estate, especially real estate photographers, should um, get uh, competent at. And there are a lot of things that you can do. To, now, I won't. I wouldn't. I'm. I'm pretty good, but again, I'm not the big boy in town uh, for shooting headshots. But a lot of it is is uh, not only the the technical end of it, but uh, it is really. Uh, it's like anything. Like Gary, you know, when you're shooting weddings, I know you shoot weddings. But uh, when you're yeah. shooting a wedding, at the beginning, you're you're really shooting tech. You're shooting technical. You're shooting camera and settings and light. You're not shooting people because you you kind of not really dealing with the people or connecting. Thing. But once you get the technicals down, then the whole real art, especially with headshots, the art is making a connection with your subject and getting the most yeah. out of them from inside to come out. So that's the hard part. And the, the technical and the lighting and the angles, that's so you can learn that on the Internet. But it's really yeah. the, the, the connecting with people that uh, is is the is the really the big challenge and uh, it's something that's really enjoyable for me because I'm getting less and less out of I still shoot weddings and shoot people but I'm getting less and less um, excited about and looking forward to shooting uh, people and I'm much more excited about shooting inanimate objects so I can yeah. see the good side on both of it but also I want to say along with shooting people as you said Gary it's really really good to be able to at least hack it and shoot food and shoot you know uh details and, and all that kind of stuff so start searching the uh what the successful photographers are doing like even adding people into your re, you know into your um architectural or design interior shots uh that's the same kind of thing so i think it's important to round yourself all out and you can learn so much on the internet and then get out and practice uh when you can uh, with people, you can shoot your family, shoot your kids, uh, set up a studio in your garage and just uh, get to that. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's um, that's one thing that my teachers, uh, when I was at school, they, they told us that, you know, in L.A., um, so everybody at school wanted to be like a fashion photographer or like a fine art photographer or like a landscape. Nobody there wanted to be an architectural photographer. And I was one of them. I was like. That must be the most boring job on the planet. <laughs> I really <laughs> thought that. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to shoot, you know, uh, weddings, and I wanted to, you know, be like a rock star wedding photographer and like shoot uh, actors and stuff like that. But um, I really, I don't know what it, what it, you know. Well, when I was in school, I was super into shooting products too. I just enjoyed being in the studio, and I feel like it's the same kind of thing in a house. You know, I like just being alone with my headphones on and I can just like take as much time as I want and nobody bugging me. I love that, you know, um, and it really just gives me time to to be artistic. And um, I, I really found that architectural photography gives me the satisfaction on both ends where it's very technical because I love little small technical stuff like working with my hands and really being like detailed with light and stuff. But um, and then also kind of my alone time and, um, and, and give me my arc, my, uh, my artistic outlet at the same time, you know? Um, but then it's kind of, I don't know, like I said, it's funny kind of balance reality and, uh, and, and then, you know, 
the surreality or whatever of it all. It's fun. It's 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 kind of challenging. I think it's challenging and fun at the same time. So I just really enjoy it. I, I remember posting um, to a local Sacramento photography group, and I think I was posting a picture of a kitchen. And I was saying something and I was, you know, I was typing something and then somebody joined in and then someone else joined in and said something like, it's a freaking kitchen for God's sakes. And I'm like, yeah. oh, you shoot this kitchen, you anyway, I don't want to go there. But you know, it's so funny because, um, you know, I tell people now um, shooting weddings are easy. Shooting houses are hard <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to get I, it I really good. Are fun too. Yeah. I have a great time shooting weddings. So yeah, you got to be not, a wedding. It's not hard or scary anymore, you know? You got to be a wedding kind of person, though. I'm a wedding kind of yeah. person. No matter how much I'm not looking forward to going to a wedding, once I get there, just something kicks in and I, I get into it and I get into the the um, the excitement and the fun and, and the, the mm -hmm. magical moments. I mean, there's nothing like, Gary, there's nothing like a hot bride and a hot groom in love with a connection. You're looking through a 70 to 200 and it is absolutely magic. And it's not, that's, not much that's, else like, it. like that's the same thing as shooting one of those, those beautiful houses like that. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, you can't yeah. shoot a bad picture of them, you know? So very true. That's rewarding. Very true. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Brian? You, uh, you ever shoot a wedding? You're not a wedding. Uh, uh, wedding yeah, well, I've, yeah, no, I've been doing weddings for oh, years. You are. That's right. Uh, yeah. You do, not, not really do you do wedding videos? Uh, now it's just video. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, is, like that too. which is great. It's, it's much easier and, um, a lot less stress, but I started in the wedding industry in 1998, mm. uh, oh, wow. or maybe even a couple of years earlier. Cause my father's a wedding photographer. I oh, said that's this before. Right. So I used to oh, assist, yeah. him, I used to assist him when I was like 13, 14 years old. Um, but at that time, you know, I was 13, 14 years old and I didn't really want to be there. And my dad used to drag me along and, <laughs> you know, so you're not really paying attention, but I used to I used to sit there at 13 loading Hasselblad blacks in one hand with a um, a big light stand in the other. So the, those days were much different um, back in the day. But nevertheless, yeah, I from 98 or 99 to about 2003, I was assisting photographers, and then um, I started shooting. Um, I started shooting with the Hasselblad, and then I switched over to 35 millimeter for a little bit, um, and then got out of that for a while, and then got back in um, when I started my video production business a couple years ago. Um, I started. I called up my old, um, all my old contacts, and I got into doing wedding video. So, yeah, I've I've probably, probably have over a thousand weddings under my belt at this point. Wow, oh, wow. you beat me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 me that, that, <laughs> that includes assisting too, but. I mean, there was a point the first year of my wedding, my, my video production business, um, I called my old contacts and this was probably, I don't know, 2010 when the whole um, Mark II video revolution came about, if you remember mm -hmm. that, when everyone started shooting video with the Mark II. And La was, Ferre, yeah. remember him? Exactly. Yeah. It was a whole uh, to-do. So I called um, to -do. one of my old contacts. <laughs> I, helped, I called one of my old contacts and no one was really doing that yet in my, uh, my community out here. Um, and he brought me in and that first year, I think I did 82 weddings, 2011. Jeez. So, um, yeah, I've done my fair share of weddings. I can definitely say that. Yeah. I've, I've done about 400, I think. Yeah. Now I probably do about five a year. Coincidentally, I have one this Sunday and it's mainly, um, when some of my old studios are stuck or they have a busy day or they have two or three jobs in a day and they'll call me just to help out. I don't book any of my own weddings. Um, kind of like you rich i just freelance for other studios give them the footage and mm -hmm. you know get a check and walk away it's a lot easier oh, that way. i, I gotta yeah. tell you i can't uh i haven't shot my own wedding well i had this year last year i i didn't shoot my own wedding i don't think i did one but the last before that i did two and then before that i did three of my own and i just love second shooting again it's just so great it's like doing spartan races or race photography i get a card in the morning i shoot crazy numbers of photos i give them the card i don't have to upload i don't have to edit i don't have to do anything just go get your kit go get your check that's it yeah really nice i do, I do that too second shooting is fun we're running low on time gary but um i just want to let all our listeners know that you do um you do have a lot of stuff on your website besides your pictures and we spoke a little bit about your workshops and you know, i know you have some ebooks out there you have some video tutorials so um without getting too deep into it because you want obviously people to come take a look at some of your stuff you're offering but 
you know, tell us a little bit about what you have. And uh, I don't know if you're coming out, you know, coming out with anything this coming year of what people should look out for besides your pictures. Um, okay, cool. So right now I have uh, I have a little like a handbook. <clears throat> I would say it's really good for somebody starting out. Um, probably. I mean, I had some feedback from uh, some seasoned photographers that were like, you know, saying some other stuff about it. But whatever. <laughs> I, um, if you're starting out. I think that handbook is great because when you're in the house and you start getting those, the nerves up um, and you start forgetting what you're doing a little bit, that, that book is basically, I made that to be a checklist of, okay, calm down, just do this right here. It's really, it's really just cut and dry. There's not a lot of fluff and stuff in it. It's really just information based and it's just made to get people through a house simply. Um, and then I also have my running gun tutorial, which is, we talked about earlier. It's kind of just a high volume workflow, um, should be able to knock it out in an hour or so, um, with shooting a house and editing. Um, and I kind of just go through that, my entire process, um, it comes with, uh, the actions or the presets and everything to go along with it. Um, and then you just have to get infused because it, it uses that. Uh, I actually, Remember how we were talking about it's not HDR because we use Flash or whatever. So I wanted to try to make this one. It's called uh, Flash DR. So it's kind of like <laughs> wait, my, what do you call uh, it? Go, 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 stay on that for a second. <laughs> Flash DR, like uh, just, flambient HDR. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of a mix between. <laughs> we can say we can say that word here on my podcast, okay? <laughs> <laughs> HDR is the way that we want to talk about that one. Oh, so, God. but it's a, it's just a, a, a quick workflow to go fast. Um, and then for, so the beginning part of that workflow, if you take infuse out of the equation, um, and you build on it, that's also the first stepping stone. All the presets and everything that I have in there is the first stepping stone into my more advanced workflow. So, um, what people have done is they take they get that one, kind of get good at it. And then I, I do coaching to get you onto the rest of my workflow. So like if you wanted to go in depth, learn how I do uh, twilights or how I do high end properties, um, and just the more extensive workflow, that's the first stepping stone. And then I can coach you along the way to the rest of it. Um, and I've had, I mean, probably about 20 ish, uh, coaching students so far. Um, and then I've had, I've had two workshops that, uh, you know, there's a handful of people I try to keep them small. But, um, yeah, so, uh, and everybody, you know, usually gets something out of it. Um, get them how to, I've, I've had students that literally started from nothing, um, coached them all the way through it and they picked it up and now they're, I mean, their work is killer. Um, so it's, it's really cool to see somebody, you know, basically starting out and then, um, they take all the stuff that I try to give them and they actually make it work. Um, and they're happy with it. Um. It's that's probably one of the most rewarding things about being a, you know, in this whole thing to me is just helping other people and seeing the progress. You know, I'm sure you see the same thing, Rich. It's fun. It is so great. We had uh, one of our ask the guys was from uh, a guy named uh, Nima Mohammadi, and Nima went from uh, shooting what was it, Brian, fifty shoots a, a year, yeah, to seventy five last yeah. year or two years ago and he's he's hitting 900 this year 900 and he, he was asking the whole podcast was about how do you you know how do you go about uh in you know adding people to your workflow do you go with a um administration first or another shooter first but just to be part of that i i'm really th just thrilled that i can help people and uh I, that's really it, it's really incredible i'm really really happy yeah yeah i, I enjoy it a lot plus you get to like nerd out with a bunch of other photographers <laughs> like like we are <laughs> yeah the workshops are definitely fun i love the one we had a workshop in dallas and uh we we wanted to show everybody tilt shifts we had i think seven or eight tripods lined up different tripods different tilt shifts it was just it was as nerdy as you get <laughs> <laughs> sounds really fun, fun really really <laughs> fun but uh, I want to I want to thank you so much, though, uh, Gary. We're running out of time, and I'd like to ask you to uh, please tell us again what is your website and uh, how can people get in touch with you and any social handles if yeah. you want to share those as well. Yeah, um, it's just sandcastle.com, S-A-N-D-K-A-S-L. Um, 
and that's basically sandcastle imaging if you just search that you'll come across the we are instagram facebook um the website's there anybody can contact me for coaching through the website um or facebook i mean if you see me on there just message me or whatever i'm pretty you know easy to get a hold of Mm -hmm. um so yeah i look forward to uh helping anybody that you know needs it um so yeah so thanks for having me guys it's been super cool pleasure all right, cool. And Rich, mm-hmm. um, it's always a pleasure. Oh, yes. I This is uh, very enjoyable. Really, really fun. And so excited about 2019. And everybody, I hope out there, you are really um, excited about um, gearing up and to excel and, and do do better things and learn more and, and have more fun and hopefully make more money and have more time. And, and that's how I always say. But, uh, you know, and Brian, uh, I wish you the best in 2019 and have fun on your, uh, on your law firm shoot and your winner. And yeah. yeah. Okay. With my uh, law firm headshots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you said, uh, so eloquently, as long as I deliver competent photos, I'm in good shape. So, yeah, you know, um, you can always fix it in Photoshop, but, uh, gotta just <laughs> connect, spend a moment looking in the eyes and, and making the, uh, your subject feel comfortable and loose and not too loose, but loose enough. And, uh, alcohol sometimes helps, but, uh, um, sure. <laughs> I'll bring, a, I'll bring a flask with yeah. me. And, uh, I want to add, tell everybody to please subscribe to, uh, this podcast, go check out, um, our, our new website, shooting spaces.net. Uh, we have the, um, you know, the podcast we've got uh, the oh the uh, feature called ask the guys where you can go on our website um shooting spaces podcast.com and then you just go to ask the guys and you re- can record a 90 second question and we'll answer it for you in an episode of ask the guys and uh, just uh, check out what we got going on because there's some good stuff there's a lot of mm-hmm. it exactly yeah. all right rich until next time yeah. everybody Every, go out and shoot some spaces. You go and shoot some spaces, guys. Did I Talk just steal your mojo? Did I steal your line, Rich? You can steal it anytime, man. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Till next time, guys. This has been Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Subscribe to the show and don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow Rich and Brian on social media and at their website, shootingspacespodcast.com.